Greetings to all. I'm delighted to be back with you to present two particularly interesting knives. More than two years ago, I discovered Maxas, a very promising brand specializing in mid-range, high-end, and very high-end knives. Although many brands offer a wide variety of knives in terms of design and materials, one is rarely surprised. But with Maxasi, you're never at the end of your surprises. The brand stands out for its many futuristic-looking models, sometimes a little too futuristic for some. But they often strike the perfect balance. In any case, it's a brand that innovates and uses a wide range of materials and steels. In this video, we'll be taking a look at two new products. To start things off, I'm going to introduce you to a knife that looks rather classic, but hides its game well because it's technically at the top for a particularly interesting price. Then we'll take a look at the astonishing capsule. The first knife is the Mamba. It's the name of a snake with a fearsome venom. The Mamba is available in five colors, including four sober ones and a brighter one, which is the one I'm presenting to you. There are two models at 228, with handles partly in carbon fiber and blades in CPM S90V, and three others at 128, two in G10 and one in Makarta, with a blade in SLD Magic Steel. We're particularly interested in the 128 models, which offer good value for money. Especially since I've seen knives in this Mamba range at around 30% off on internet sites. If you're looking for a classy, sober knife, you could opt for the Black G10 or the Makarta model, for example. If you're looking for a little originality, then the Red G10 may be just what you're looking for. Maxas is no slouch when it comes to the high quality of its knives, but the technical specifications of its products are minimalist, so it's worth investigating to find out more about their features. First of all, the Mamba's bolsters give it an antique look. These bolsters are made of titanium, as is the entire frame structure formed by the turntables. The material is premium, solid, light, and corrosion resistant. On my model, the bolsters are gray-green in color and extend into finely textured red G10 scales. But there's more to elegance than that. You'll notice that the blade has a border that gives it a nice style. This is achieved by a San Mei type sandwich structure. We could leave it at that without trying to find out more, but I believe that steel is a large part of the knife's DNA, so it's important to understand what alloy you're dealing with. In fact, it's the steel that largely determines the price of a knife. What I can tell you about this SLD magic steel made by Hitachi of Japan is already its composition. 1.5% carbon, 8% chromium, 1% molybdenum, and 0.4% vanadium for the most part. The composition of this steel is quite similar to that of D2, with two minor differences. The lower chromium content of SLD Magic will make it slightly less resistant to corrosion, but it should be slightly more resistant to impact. D2 is generally not susceptible to corrosion if the blade is dried after use. You'll have to be a little more scrupulous with the SLD Magic. The SLD Magic's greater toughness and, hence, resistance to chipping, is a positive point. Even if a folding knife is rarely subjected to shocks as a result of its use, you can sometimes hit a hard, foreign body on a board, piece of metal or gravel when cutting energetically, and that's when chipping can occur. The composition of the SLD Magic, with its high carbon content, makes it a knife with a very appreciable cutting edge and not too difficult to sharpen. My cutting test on Tough Pipe confirmed this. It slices perfectly. What you'll really appreciate about this knife, apart from its cutting capacity and excellent grip, is its finish. It looks like a top-of-the-range knife. Its ergonomics are very good. The flipper release is very lively, and the blade folding is very smooth. The liner lock falls nicely under the thumb to unlock the blade. There's a lanyard loop on the back of the handle between the plates. The titanium pocket clip is a real design highlight, so this Mamba has a lot going for it. The presentation continues with an unusual knife, the capsule. It comes in a box in the same colors as the knife, with a beautiful nylon sheath and a complete bag of spare screws and bolts. 
It's a small, wide, heavy knife with a short, thick blade. For the moment, it comes in two models, a red-white and a purple-green. This knife innovates in a number of technical respects, with very modern lines. The structure of the cap is formed by sturdy titanium plates. The result is a thick, sturdy liner lock. Cerakote scales are attached to these plates. This is the great originality of the capsule. Cerakote is a material manufactured by the American company Nick Industries. Cerakote is a ceramic-based material offering high resistance to abrasion, corrosion, and chemicals. Cerakote also withstands high temperatures and is unaffected by UV rays. Its coefficient of friction rivals that of Teflon. In other words, it's a coating that favors glide. Cerakote is used in the automotive, firearms, and aerospace industries, as well as in eyewear, consumer electronics, portable appliances, industrial valves, and, of course, to form a coating on the blades of certain knives, and now also for their inserts. Cerakote is available in different types and over a hundred colors. This capsule features an M390 steel blade, one of the highest quality available. It is particularly resistant to corrosion and retains its sharpness for a long time. Given its dimensions and geometry, the blade has a considerable thickness behind the cutting edge. As a result, the blade is very robust, but you have to exert a lot of pressure to penetrate the material as there is a lot of resistance and friction. Cutting efficiency is much lower with the capsule than with the Mamba, all the more so given the capsule's small size with its short blade and handle. As a result, the grip limits the amount of force you can exert. What's more, the handle offers little protection, with no guard or notch for the index finger. You have to be careful not to let your index finger slip on the blade, especially as Cerakote is very smooth. The opening mechanism is a very prominent front flipper. It reminds me of another Maxass knife, the Kestrel. The name capsule is silk screened on the front flipper. The front flipper is generally unintuitive, requiring an unnatural thumb movement and a flick of the wrist to propel the blade. It's a move worth taking. But I find that sometimes when it comes out, the blade rubs on the palm of the hand. Or even the front flipper, when it enters the handle when opening, pinches the thumb. All this requires a precise gesture and good finger positioning. Nevertheless, the capsule's front flipper is one of the most practical. The beautifully crafted blade is impressive despite its small size. It also features double jimping. This capsule is a super stylish knife, in my opinion aimed primarily at collectors. Folding knives fall into three broad categories. Utility knives, collector's knives, and premium utility knives. I'd classify the Mamba as a utility knife, or even as a premium utility knife, because it's beautifully finished, and the capsule as a collector's knife. Even if the capsule can stand out for certain uses, notably with its sturdy Japanese Tanto blade for perforating, its attractive two-tone handle, with a seam between the two colors, makes it a truly designer tool. The titanium pocket clip, which forms a small deviation, is also very stylish. This is also the case with the small backspacer, which forms a passage for a lanyard. The capsule is an original, surprising, high-quality knife, but not necessarily optimized for intensive use due to its small size. It is one of those aesthetic knives that will delight geeks and collectors alike. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I'm counting on your likes, shares, and comments to support the channel. See you soon for more knives.